Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we will learn about recursion in Python, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I've got Visual Studio Code open and a folder over here in the file tree for Lesson 10. We're going to not only learn about recursion today, but also review a few concepts we've covered in previous lessons and once again refactor our rock, paper, scissors game. So recursion happens in Python when a function calls itself. So that would be a recursive function. So let's get started today by creating a file in the file tree and we'll name this file recursion.py. Okay, now I'm going to add a function here that will be a recursive function. So I'll start with the def keyword. I'm going to call this function add underscore one. It's going to have one parameter and that will be a number. So I'll just represent that with num. So when we call it with the argument we pass in, it will be a number. And then inside the function, I'm going to say if num is greater than or equal to the number nine, then we're going to return. So this will end the function when the return keyword starts here. So it will not go any further in the function. Then we'll say num plus one. But after that, I want to create a new variable called total and have it be equal to num plus one. So this will only be created if the number is less than nine. And now I'm going to print the total. And then after all of this, again, this only happens if the number is less than nine, I'm going to once again return and I'm going to call the add one function and pass in the total value. So this is the recursive call to the function. It calls itself here on line nine. Now notice we're returning that and we're passing in the new total. So it will continue to call itself until it is greater than or equal to nine essentially. And that's when it will just return the number plus one here. So now, of course, this is just the definition. The file is not calling the function yet, so we need to call the function to see how it works. So let's do that with add underscore one, and let's pass in the number zero. So I'll save the file with control S, and I noticed it scrolled up on me, so I'm going to add a couple of lines. So now when I save, it will not scroll up. There we go. And now drop here and choose run Python file, and notice we get the numbers one through nine. And you may be thinking, why didn't we get the number 10? Because we passed in nine to the function and that is when it went here. But notice there is no print statement here inside the if, so we're not printing the number 10. The only way we might be able to do that would be to return a value from our function here. So we could say my new total is equal to add one and pass in zero. And then when the complete recursive calls are all finished, then we will print my new total. And now here on line 15 is where the number 10 would be printed. So let's run our code again. We can see we now get the number 10, but just one through nine are printed here with line nine. And the number 10 is printed here at line 15. And this makes it important to note this return keyword because if we forget and leave that out with our recursive call, everything will go ahead and continue, but we will not get a value returned to my new total. So let's go ahead and save this and I'll show what happens. We run the code again and now instead of the number 10, we get none because we were not returning this recursive call. So we wanna make sure we do that. And by the way, none is a special value in Python. It's not true or false, it's just none. But let's go ahead and put the return keyword back in here so we can get a value out of our recursive function. So now when I save and run the code, we once again have the number 10. Now it's worth noting that you could use a loop to achieve this same result, and that would be a good practice exercise for you. Go ahead and try to create a loop instead of a recursive call, and you could do that inside of a function that would have the same output that we have here. However, recursion's a mathematical concept, and sometimes it's just necessary. And overall, I think it's important that you can recognize recursion as a beginner. So if you are reading someone else's code and you see that the function calls itself, you'll know that that is recursion. 
Now, before we move on to refactor our rock, paper, scissors game one more time, I want to create another file in the file tree and let's just call this file example.py because I want to review a couple of things we have covered in the past to add a little more clarity here. So we're going to talk about while loops and how they evaluate the true or false condition just a little. So I'm going to set value here equal to true. And then after that, I'm going to say while value and we can use double equal signs to say true, but most of the time you will just see while value and it implies that while value is true or while value exists, which is something we're going to talk about. So now I'm going to print the value and then after this, I'm going to set the value equal to false. So this is what we would expect from this loop. It would print true one time and then the value is changed to false. And then when it comes up here for the second iteration, when it wants to go back through the loop, it will see that value is now false and the loop will exit. So let's save this and see if that's what we get for our output. Yes, we get true one time here in the output. Now it's also worth noting that we could set value equal to zero and it would evaluate as false. Zero is considered false. So we run the code again and we get true one time and it also exits. But note what I said before about value. So I said it doesn't really just have to evaluate to true. It can be saying while value exists. And that is because we could set value equal to a string like why say our user says they want to play rock, paper, scissors again. And so that input is why for yes. And then it still exists. So this will evaluate the same as true. So now if I run the code, we're going to get why one time instead of true because this evaluated as true. If we set this to zero or false here, we wouldn't even get the one print line that we are right now. Now I'm going to make this into a slightly larger example now. So I'll say count equals zero and we'll still have our while value here. And then let me start out with count plus equals one. So instantly we'll increment the count variable by one. So now it is equal to one the first time through the loop. After that, instead of print value, let's print the count. And then after that, let's have an if statement. I'll say if the count is equal to five, then we're going to break out of the loop. But then we can also have an else and inside the else, I'm going to set the value equal to zero and then I'm going to use continue. And I want to highlight this because I had a question about this. And the question was when using the keyword continue, is the loop still evaluated here at the top? Does it check the while value part? And that answer is yes. It's going to check the value every time to evaluate whether the loop should execute again or not. So let's think about what this loop does before we run the code. And we're going to increment count by one and print the count. So we'll have one as our output so far. It says if count equals five. Well, it doesn't, it equals one. So we'll go down to the else. And then here we're setting a value equal to zero. Now that's what we're evaluating here on line four. Does value exist or is it true? And when it has zero, it does exist, but it's not true. Zero is equal to false. So that should end the loop. So the continue will just bring it back up here for the evaluation. It will be evaluated and it will see, no, we're not going through the loop again. So all we should get is a print count of one. Let's go ahead and run our code and see if that's what we get. That is what we get, just the one. So what we're learning here is that yes, using the continue keyword does cause an evaluation before the loop executes again. Now I've got the rock, paper, scissors code pulled up from our previous lessons and we've refactored it a couple of times. I've created a new file named rps3.py as this would be the third time. So if you've got that from a previous lesson, bring it up. If not, you can get this code from the course resources. So I'll leave that in there. However, I'm going to refactor it now. So the starter code for this, the last time we refactored, I believe was lesson eight, which is also in the course resources. The code in this lesson, lesson 10, will be the refactored code. So you'll find the finish code in lesson 10. 
Okay, now moving on, we have learned several things that it could improve our game at this point. So one of those things is functions. So let's make our game a function. And we're going to include everything after the imports here at the top. So we'll use the def keyword and let's call this play underscore RPS. And then we have a colon. So everything else needs to be indented to be part of the function. So I'm going to start selecting here on line seven now, scroll all the way down to the bottom, except for this system exit here. So I'll press the shift key and click and it highlights everything. And then I'm going to tab in. So now it should make all of that code part of the function. So now everything is in the function except that system exit that we have right here. And we'll probably end up moving it in the function too, but we don't have to for now. Now let's go ahead and add the function call here at the bottom that we're going to need. So it was play underscore RPS. And we would need to call that, of course, to execute the function to see our game play at all. So we'll save that much. And we now have a function for our rock, paper, scissors game. Now, the next thing we can do is actually remove the while loop and we can use recursion in our function instead. So let's do that by deleting the play again equals true and the while play again that starts the while loop. But after we delete these, now everything is indented too far underneath here. It thinks it's part of the class RPS that we created up here. So we need to select everything on line 14. Once again, scroll down to the bottom here and I'll click shift or press shift and click. And then we're going to press shift and the tab key to tab reverse and go back out just a little bit. So now everything is once again part of the function and it doesn't consider it part of our RPS class here that we start the function with either. So just verify that your indentation is correct and Python will read that correctly. Now we need to make some changes. As you might've noticed, I have a red squiggly line here where the continue keyword is that was applying to a loop, but let's start at the top and work our way down. One thing we still haven't fixed in our game is the player choice value. If the input from a user was something that would cause an error as we cast to an integer here on line 16, we're not handling that at this point, but we can do that. So let's put an if statement underneath the input here where we get our player choice value. And let's say if player choice, and then we'll say not in, and let's create a simple list because we know we're only expecting a one, two, or three, and all user input is string. So here we have not in one, two, or three in our list. So we're making sure the player choice is one of those. But if it's not, let's execute some code in the if block here. So we'll say print, and now we're just going to take this message that we have in the system exit below because we will be removing this. Let's put this in. You must enter a one, two, or three. And after that, this is a good time to use a recursive function call. So we will return and we'll say play underscore RPS. And that's all we need. So we're calling the function here again, and it will go back to the top. And it will once again ask for the input of a one, two, or three. And with that completed, we can delete the other if statement we had here previously. Now note, I've already pressed Alt Z, so Visual Studio Code will wrap my code down. I expected both of these lines to look like this first one. However, it's doing something a little weird here. I've noticed when I delete this spacing and bring it back to look like the other one, and then I save, it auto formats it back this way. So just note that if you see this in your code, it is just happening automatically by Visual Studio Code, and I'm not entirely sure why, but it's essentially all one line, just like this line above is. Now let's scroll down and fix the area where we have the continue problem here, but we're going to start here on line 41 where we have play again, because remember, we're no longer evaluating play again for the loop at the top. I'm going to start though with a print statement, and I'm going to print, and here is where I'm going to ask the play again statement. So I'll just copy that, paste it in there, and 
finish that print statement. And then of course we can remove that same phrase from the print statement here. But I want to have this input in a while loop. And again, this is correcting the input. Right now, if we get a Y for yes, then it will play again. And any other input, not just a Q, but any other input will quit the game. But we want to limit the accurate choices to just Y and Q. So here I'm just going to say while true. So we're just looking for a true value to begin the loop once again. And then we'll have our play again. I guess I don't need that extra line. I could just tab this in. So then we'll have play again, ask for the input. I'll get rid of one of these extra new line characters at the end though. And now let's evaluate play again. So we'll say if play again dot lower, then not in, and let's create another list. And we'll just have Y and Q as the two items in our list. And then inside the block for the if statement, I'll just use the continue keyword. So if it's not Y or Q, it's just going to start the loop again and ask for Y or Q. So we're just asking our users to please specifically enter Y or Q. And then our else will just issue the break statement. So if they do enter a Y or Q, the loop stops. Now here the if statement below was checking for a Y and we still want that. So the loop is stopped, they've entered a Y and now this is a good place to put our recursive call to the function once again. So play RPS because they want to play again. If not, we're going to still print the thank you for playing but we no longer have to evaluate play again for a loop. So let's just take our system exit line right here, control X to cut it and control V to paste it over that line on 55 that was setting the play again value. And now rock, paper, scissors should be ready to play and it is a recursive function. So let's give it a shot and see if everything works as we expect it to. So I'll enter one for rock and hey, we won, that's great. Do I wanna play again? Yes, let's play again. Let me enter something else like an A now that would have caused possibly an error before. But now it just goes back and says, we need to enter a one, two, or three. How about a five? Nope, one, two, or three. So I'll enter two, and now Python wins. So Y for yes to quit, or I mean to continue playing, or Q to quit, and let's enter a four instead. No, it just asks us the same question again. So we're in that loop until we get a Y or a Q. We did Y once already, let's enter a Q and we quit. So our game is working as expected. You've now applied a recursive function to the rock, paper, scissors game. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.